This tutorial is a detailed overview of the Pocket Toolpath strategy. We're going to look at all of the options in the form and show the effects of the different settings that you have on the toolpath that you create. So let's just go to File, Close. So let's go ahead and open an existing file. So from the Pocket Toolpath Guide project folder, we're going to open Pocket Toolpath Example 1, press Open. So here we just have a set of simple vectors that we're going to use to demonstrate all of the options within the Pocket Toolpath. So let's switch over to the Toolpaths tab. So the first and most important thing we need to do is set up our material. So working with a half inch thickness, XY will be in the lower left hand corner, Z0 is on the material surface, and then ensuring that your rapid Z gaps home start position are all safe and appropriate for your particular setup. So the pocket toolpath allows you to take whatever vectors you've got selected and machine inside of those to clear out the material down to your specified cut depth. So we're going to start by demonstrating this using a very simple square vector. So I've selected that and we'll come over to the pocket toolpath, which is this icon here. And if I click on that, that will open up the pocket toolpath form. So at the moment, we are looking at the basic pocket toolpath form. We have this option to show the advanced toolpath options. And if I check on that, we now have a longer version of the form, which has some more advanced options for our pocket toolpath. Now for this example, we're just going to switch this off and look at the basic options available. And with this off, it means that we no longer have access to pass depth control other than what we set for the tool itself. No two tool machining, no pocket allowance, no vector selection control, and we can't access the vector selector. So we'll look at more of the advanced options later in this tutorial. So we're going to start by looking at the cut depths. So here we're having a start depth where we can specify where you want to start from. In this case, we want to start from the top of the material, which is at zero. Then we move on to the cut depth. So this is the total cut depth that you want to cut in to your pocket. In this case, I'm just going to put in a value of a quarter of an inch in here. Next up, we need to specify the tool that we want to use to create our pocket toolpath with. So we use the select option here and that will open up your tool database. So here we're just going to go with a quarter inch end mill and then we can use the select option to apply that in our pocket toolpath. So then we've got the edit option here. So here we can focus on parameters that will affect the toolpath. Okay, so we've got the pass depth. So this is the amount of Z that the tool can travel through the material and safely cut. Uh, then we have the step over. So this is the horizontal distance between each pass the tool is going to take. And we'll look at the effects of this in a moment. And so for the pass depth, uh, we're actually going to change this so that it is a quarter of an inch. So it's equivalent to the actual cut depth that was specified in the form here. So we'll expect to see that toolpath created in one single Z level. Then you have the option to check over your feeds and speeds. Now, this tutorial is a guide to demonstrate the pocket toolpath, so I'm not going to worry about feeds and speeds here. However, if you were to cut this, you would need to check the settings are safe and appropriate for your particular application. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and press OK. So the next option in the form is how we clear the pocket. So we have offset and we have raster. So raster strategy will go back and forth where we have the option to apply a profile pass and we'll come back to this shortly. Or we have the offset strategy. And so the offset strategy will just follow the shape of the vectors. Moving on down, we then have the ramp plunge moves. So this is an option to ramp into the material. So this means that as the tool is entering the material that it will use a diagonal move rather than a straight move, straight vertical move. And in some cases with certain tooling, this can just really help reduce the wear of the tool. 
then we can give our toolpath a name so in this case we'll just go with pocket and then we could go ahead and press calculate and then the software will open up the preview toolpaths form and we can actually see uh, the actual toolpath drawing here and so if we just go and zoom in just using the scroll of the mouse and we'll just pan that view across we can see the distance between each of these toolpath moves and that's defined by the step over that we had set up for the tool and we'll look back at this in a moment now if we just take a look up the Y axis, we can see that it's actually being cut on one single level. And that's because the pass depth matched the cut depth of the pocket. And so it's cleared that in one pass. So if we just put that in the ISO view, so let's look at previewing that toolpath. Before we do that, we're just going to use the global fill color option. We'll go for a dark green color here so that we can just better see the actual uh, pocket toolpath as it's being cut. I'm just going to slow the speed down here just so you get a better idea of how it's going to look. And we'll just zoom in also just so you can get a better view. Okay, so if we go ahead now and preview that toolpath, so we can see the wireframe of uh, the tool actually cutting our part away and it's just doing that in one pass and if we just speed that up we can take a look at the actual finished part. So you'll notice that the corners of our pocket have a rounded edge and that's due to the radius of the tool. And there really is no way to avoid this other than using smaller and smaller tools to try and reduce its effect. Now this is only really important if you are inlaying a sharp object into a pocket like this and that's dealt with using a different toolpath strategy which is covered in another video. So let's just go ahead and reset that preview. I'm just going to switch on the visibility of that toolpath and we're going to double click on the pocket toolpath to open that back up. So now we're going to look at what happens if we edit the pass step. So let's use the edit option for the tool. You can see we currently have a pass depth of a quarter of an inch. So we're telling the software that we want the ultimate pass depth here to be a quarter of an inch. And it just so happens to be the same as the cut depth that we're cutting into. That's why it created this cutout in one pass. Now if we were to change this and we'll say we want the pass depth to be an eighth of an inch, we're now telling the software we don't want um, one pass to go deeper than one eighth of an inch. And so if we go ahead now and press OK, and then if we come over to the calculate option, and if we hold down control and press calculate, that will calculate that for us without opening the preview toolpaths form. And so here I can take a look visually at what's going on here while still making edits to the actual pocket toolpath form. And then if we just move the view, we can see that in our preview here, we've actually got two passes here. So the tool will come down and it will create the first pass and then it will come down again to create the second pass at that full cut depth of a quarter of an inch whereby we're coming down in one eighth inch passes. So let's just put that back in the ISO view. Now this time we're going to go back into the edit option and here we're actually going to look at controlling the step over. So here we're just going to take that pass depth, we're just going to change that back to a quarter of an inch uh, to the single depth of cut that we've got here. And then for the step over, I'm just going to change that value, we're going to make that 0 0.02, so you can type a value in, or you could look at using the arrow keys uh, to alter the percentage here. And so this step over is the distance horizontally between each one of these passes. And so we're going to have a much smaller step over in this case. So we'll go ahead and press OK. And then here we'll use the control and calculate option here. And so we can see straight away we have a much tighter step over. And if we just zoom in there, we can take a look at that. And then if we... Uh, just take a look at that up the y-axis, 
we can see we're also cutting that down in one single level because we altered the pass depth to match that of the cut depth and in terms of the actual step over itself it's more dense because the distance between the moves is a lot less okay so i'll just put that back in the iso view and then we'll go over to the edit option and here we're going to increase the step over this time so we'll make that 0.2 or 80 percent in there okay that and then we can press control and calculate and you can see now that we have much larger distance between each one of these passes you'll also notice that the software has added in these tails in there so that we don't have any upstanding pieces of material in the corners and so that's the effect of the pass depth and the step over for this tool so let's use the edit option here I'm just going to change everything back so we're going to have a pass depth of a quarter of an inch and a step over of 0.1 in this case then we could go ahead and press OK and then we'll control and calculate again just to get the original toolpath back up. So now we're going to look at exploring the effects of changing the strategy or the pattern in which we cut the pocket out. And so we've demonstrated the offset, so now we're going to look at using the raster strategy. And this is where you can go back and forth. So here we have the option to apply a raster angle. At the moment it's currently at 90 degrees so the long moves will be parallel to the y-axis in this case we're going to put that at zero so that the long moves are parallel to the x-axis then you have the option to apply profile pass so here you have none you have first and last so no profile pass will not apply a profile pass and it will just do the raster and that's all uh, first means that it will run a profile pass uh, to begin with followed by the raster pass or last means it will run the raster pass first followed by the profile pass in this case we're just going to go with no profile pass here and then we can come over and use the option to calculate okay so if we just reduce the speed just so we can take a look at what is happening here we'll just zoom in there and then we can go ahead and preview that toolpath we can see it's going back and forth parallel to the x-axis and if we just speed that up so it's completed the actual cut itself and you'll notice that where we've cut the pocket with our 40 percent step over and using that raster strategy we are left with these cusps and that's because we are using a round tool now that's okay but I might want to make a nice smooth edge that follows the actual vector itself and that's where the profile options can help so let's just reset that preview close out of the toolpath form and then with that toolpath selected we're going to use the edit toolpath option so here we're going to specify a profile pass to go with our raster pattern. So here we have first or last. Now you're going to get the same result. This is really just to do with the type of material that you may be cutting. Some materials will benefit from having the profile cut first so that they don't chip when doing the raster pattern and others can benefit from running the profile pass last. So in this case, we're just going to go with the last option there. You notice the graphic is also updated so we've got the raster we also have this profile around the edge here so let's go ahead and calculate that okay so here we can see our raster we can also see this line uh, that's coming around the outside so this square shape here that's the profile that's just going to clean up all of those cusps that we saw earlier so let's just slow that preview down again and then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath okay so here it's just going back and forth creating that raster pattern and once it's done the actual raster itself it's then going to uh, go around the outer edge so there is that profile cut and so here we can see now that it's actually cleaned up uh, the edges there 
Right then, so let's just reset that preview and we're just going to double click to go back into our pocket toolpath. So now we're going to look at the raster angle. So at the moment it's currently at zero degrees, and so that's cutting the longest part parallel to the X axis. Now if we change this value to 90, that's going to be parallel to the Y axis. So if I press control and calculate, we can see what that looks like there. And then if we wanted to change this again, let's say we want that at 30 degrees and press control and calculate. And that's going to do that 30 degrees from the X axis. So let's just put that back to zero and press control and calculate to put it back to its original settings. And so that's pretty much it for the clear pocket section of the pocket toolpath. The only items that we haven't discussed here is the cut direction where the software offers us with two options, climb and conventional, for the cut direction for the offset strategy and the profile pass on the raster strategy. And to learn more about this and to find out which option would be best for the application that you are using, you can research these methods online. And I personally think it's worth investigating the benefits of either of these choices. So now we can look at the last option in our simplified pocket toolpath form. And that's whether we add in a ramp entry move or not. So the ramp move just enables us to create a diagonal ramp in to our cut rather than having the tool just plunging vertically down into our material. So to do this, you use the check option here and then you need to specify the actual length of the ramp in this distance form here. So here we'll just leave that set to one inch and that will just create a diagonal pattern at one inch where it comes back on itself by one inch. So if we go ahead and press calculate, control and calculate, we can take a look uh, in our preview here if we just twiddle our view we can actually see what's going on here okay so tools coming down and you'll see that we've got this aqua line so we've got this diagonal line here that represents our ramp move okay so it's going to ramp down into diagonal motion at half of the pass steps to one inch which we specified here and then for the other one inch, it's going to complete the full pass depth until it gets to that pass depth. Then the toolpath will continue to cut at the raster strategy that we've got specified here. And so this just stops you vertically cutting in with the tools. Some tools don't have a good cutting face when moving vertically downwards. And so adding in this ramp move provides some horizontal movement and it just means that it just lessens the wear and tear of the tool itself. So let's just put that back in the ISO view. So now we're just going to undraw the option here to apply the ramp plunge moves. And next we're going to look at using multiple vectors to create pockets where we have vectors sat inside of other vectors. So let's just control and calculate that just to reset it. And we're going to tile our windows so you can see both the 2D and the 3D view. So like I said, so far we've only looked at using a single vector to create a pocket toolpath. But now if we select all of the vectors, and we can do that just by simply pressing Control and A on the keyboard, that will select all of them within our job. And now if we go ahead and if we just keep all of the parameters the same and then use the option to control and calculate. So you'll see that where we have vectors within vectors, what the software will do, it will machine between the first two vectors, so between the circle and this star, and then it will leave a gap before machining inside of the next vector. So let's just close out here. I'm just going to go into the preview toolpaths form. So now if we go ahead and preview this toolpath, so it's starting with that square in the corner. I just want to increase that speed there. And it will move on to the next shape. OK, 
Okay, so you can see it's cut the inside circle and it's cut inside the circle between the star and then for the text, it's kept the text raised, we've got a border and then we've got an outer cut out there. And so the software will do all of the hard work for you in determine which side of the vector the toolpath is going to machine on to create the series of pockets. Okay, so we're just going to deselect all of these vectors. I'm going to close out of the preview toolpaths form. I'm just going to maximize the 2D view. Use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits. And then we're going to jump back in to the pocket toolpath. So now we're going to look at the effect of deselecting some of these vectors. So I'm going to hold down shift and we're going to select this central vector here. Hold down shift and then we're going to select this star here. So now for this section here, the toolpath should just cut between this vector and this circle here and just fill everything out there like so. And then for this area here, the software should cut in between these two vectors and then it's going to leave this material here between this vector and the text that we've got and then it will machine inside of the text at the settings that we're using here. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we'll calculate that like so and then if we just reset that preview we can see the result that we've got here. And so if we go ahead and preview that toolpath, we can take a look at the part that we've got and we can see that the result is different from last time. And it's very important to select the right number of vectors and make sure that you have additional vectors on the outside if you need to change the order that this is going to pocket them in. Right then, so let's just reset that preview. Then we'll go over into the 2D view close out of the preview toolpath form or we'll double click on the pocket toolpath just to open up that toolpath form again and then we're going to select all the vectors so I can just box select them like so and now we're going to look at the advanced toolpath options so we're going to check this option here and so as usual you'd work your way down the form so starting at the top where you alter the cutting depths then you need to specify the tool that you're going to use. And you'll notice we have this new option here, which is the edit passes. It's currently telling us that in order to cut this using the settings that we've currently got here, it's going to cut this out using one pass. And so previously using the uh, basic form here, we would define the actual tool parameters using this edit option here. And so if we go into the edit option, we, what we did was we looked at the pass depth and then we entered a pass depth in here and then the software would basically divide up the depth of cut using this pass depth as a maximum that it shouldn't exceed. So just as an example, let's just alter that pass depth. So we're going to change that to 0.1 and then we could go ahead and press OK. And you'll notice now that the number of passes has changed. It's telling us that we are going to cut this in three passes. And we can actually edit the passes using this option here. And if we click on that, that will open up a form where we can be very specific about the depths of cut to apply to this toolpath. Now so by default, what the software has done is it's looked at the pass depth that we set for the tool, which is this 0.1, and then it will look for a number that it can divide the depth of cut equally into that will make sure that each depth of cut is below this value that we set. And so here we are getting three passes at a depth of 0 0.0833 inches per pass. Now, in some cases, you may want to maintain that pass depth and not divide the part up equally, in which case you can come down to this section here to maintain the exact tool pass depth. And so if we check that, that will say that we're going to do that two passes at 1.1 of an inch 
with a final pass at 0 0.05 to reach the complete cut of a quarter of an inch. And so if we use the set passes option, we can see that displayed in our form where we have our first pass depth of 0.1, second at 0.2, and the last is going to be at a quarter of an inch. Now you'll notice that every time I click on each one of these passes, uh, the graphic is actually updating. So this red line represents the highlighted value, the highlighted pass depth that we are using. Now, if I wanted to just go ahead and uncheck the maintain exact tool pass depth, and then just use the set passes option just to put it back to the default settings. I could also look at another way of just increasing or decreasing the number of passes, and that's just using this option here. So here we've got currently three passes that has been equally divided up here, uh, like we can see there. And I can use the arrow key here to go up, and you can see we've got four, we've got five, six, and I can keep entering as many as I want to in there and you'll see that uh, the form is being updated we've got more values in here for each one of those past steps as well as this graphic um, showing me where those past steps belong in relation to our material thickness. We can also look at typing in a value so I could just enter four in there and then we could go and use the option here to set the passes and that will just reset that form where we now have four passes there at a depth of a sixteenth of an inch. So we have this option in the form to apply a last pass thickness and so if we check that option that will enable us to define the depth of cut for the final Z level. So for example, if we put in 0 0.02 in there and then go ahead and press apply, we can see it's added in that additional level in here. So we're only cutting 0 0.02 of an inch in our final pass. And this can be helpful in some materials from a finishing point of view to reduce the load on the last pass. Or if you're cutting all the way through the material, then it can be helpful to make sure that it's holding the part in place, but making sure that you are not loading the tool up too much when you do the final pass. So we're just going to uncheck this option here. And then we use this option here to set the passes, just to reset it back to four passes at a sixteenth of an inch per pass. There's lots of options in here to control each individual pass here. If we wanted to, we could look at deleting any one of these passes by double clicking on the actual image or so selecting the value and using the delete key here. So let's do that. So with the eighth inch there, we can use the delete option and you'll see that our graphic will update, our form will also update. So we're coming down at a sixteenth of an inch and then we move down on quite a large uh, pass depth here, reaching that 0.1875 and then finally at that quarter inch. We can also look at editing pass steps if we wanted to. So we could take this value here, and if we wanted to change that, we could just come over into this form and we'll say that we want that to be 0.15 for instance. We could apply that and you'll see that the graphic is updated. It's jumped up to that position where we're now cutting at 16th. Then we're cutting at 0.15, followed by the quarter inch cut out at the end. We also have the ability to clear all the passes and that will remove all the passes so we're working with one single pass depth here of a quarter of an inch. And so we have lots of control over all of the individual passes here within this form. Let's come back to the bottom, just going to reset that back to the, so that the number of passes uh, is three here, then we can simply go ahead and OK that. And then we'll just calculate that toolpath to see how it looks. So let's just reset that preview. And then we're just going to preview that toolpath. Okay, so there's one pass, there's a second pass, and there's the third pass, and then it will move on to the next shapes. Okay, so there's the star, and then here we have the actual text as well. 
Okay then, so if we put that down the Z axis, it doesn't look too bad. However, we do have a little problem here between the X and the T and the E and the X, okay? And that's because our tool is too large to fit in between those areas. Now, not only can we see that in this toolpath preview in the 3D view here, but if we go over to our 2D view, if we just switch on the visibility of our toolpath, by default, we can see at the top here, we have our 2D drawing visibility switched on. So at the moment, we're actually looking at a wireframe uh, version of this toolpath. And if we just zoom in on the 2D view, we can see where the tool is going and in which direction, which is all well and good. However, for things like this, it might be easier for us to actually view this uh, using the solid preview. So if we click on that option there, that will display the toolpath in this purple colour. And everything that is purple is where the tool will cut away at. And everything that is white is what the tool will not touch and it will just leave it alone. And if we zoom in on the text here, we can see the area between the X and the T and the E and the X here where the tool actually can't quite fit. Now, if I wanted to cut in between those characters, I could look at increasing the spacing between the text characters. But if I wanted to keep the text as it is, then I could simply look at using a smaller tool that will actually fit in between those characters there. So let's just double click back into the pocket toolpath form. We're going to use the select option here. So here we're going to change this up and we're going to use the eighth inch end mill. Okay, so it's doing that at a pass depth of an eighth of an inch, which is fine. So we could go ahead and select that. So here it's telling us it's going to cut that in two passes. Now, if we press control and calculate, you'll see now that the software has actually updated our 2D preview and it's actually filled that area with color because we are using the smaller tool to actually go in there and actually cut uh, that material out because we're using the smaller tool it can actually fit in between those characters now the downside of this is that using a smaller tool will mean that it will take longer to machine than when I was using the larger tool now one option that we do have in the pocket toolpath form is to use two tools a larger one to clear out the pocket and then a smaller one to finish between the gaps that we had earlier. So let's just have a look at how we can use this larger area clearance tool. So we're just going to use this option here just to zoom our active view to the drawing limits. And so we're going to check the option to use a larger area clearance tool. If we use the select option here, we're going to use this quarter inch end mill there use the select option and so we're going to fill out the majority of the machining using the larger quarter inch tool and then we're going to go in at the details using the eighth inch end mill to get into those areas uh, that will fit between the x and the t and the e and the x okay so here if we go ahead and just calculate that so that will open up uh, the preview toolpaths form we can reset that preview I'm actually going to tile our windows here and if we just undraw the visibility of the toolpaths you'll notice that we've got two toolpaths here we've got pocket clear and we've got pocket okay so your pocket clear is your clearance tool so that's using the larger quarter inch end mill and if I switch on the visibility of that toolpath we can see um, where that's going to machine, okay? So we can see all those areas that it can't fit inside, like here and here and here and close to the corners of the star there. And then if we undraw that, we could take a look at our second toolpath that it's created. So this one is the pocket toolpath using the eighth inch end mill. And if I click on that, you'll see that it's only going into the areas that that larger tool couldn't actually fit into. And so it's getting in at uh, the smaller details. 
And so if we go ahead and preview this, so we'll take a look at the clearance tool first. So we could preview that to begin with. So it's just going to machine away uh, at our pocket using that larger tool like so. And then we can go in afterwards with the finer tool. So the eighth inch end mill here. So we're going to get in at the details that that larger tool couldn't quite reach. And then we could go ahead and preview that. And you'll see that it's just kind of just cleared that up for us. And so this is a much more efficient approach to machining by using the two tool paths. So the pocket, clear everything out, and then the smaller tool uh, to get in at all of the details. Now the only downside is that I am going to have to make a tool change. And so you'll just have to figure out what works best for you. So let's close out of the preview toolpaths form. Now, if I click on either one of these toolpaths to open up the pocket toolpath form and then make further changes to the toolpath, it will ultimately make changes to both of these toolpaths and both will be recalculated. OK, so we're going to double click into this toolpath here. And then we're actually going to switch off the use larger area clearance tool. We're going to go into the tool database and we're just going to use a quarter inch end mill so we're just going to simplify this example as now we're going to look at a further option that we have in the form which is this pocket allowance and so it may be advantageous for us to apply a slight overcut or an undercut to the pockets and so to do this we can just enter a pocket allowance now a positive number will undercut the size of the pocket by whatever value you enter in here for example if we go in with a pocket allowance of 0 0.05 and then if we go ahead and press control and calculate if we just maximize the 2d view just so we can see what's going on here you can see that in this solid preview we've actually created a smaller pocket based on this allowance and the nice thing about this is that I can change the size of the pocket without having to change or create new vectors so we could also look at applying a negative allowance so this means we actually overcut our part for example we could go to the pocket allowance and put in a negative 0 0.05 in there and we could go ahead and press control and calculate and you'll see that the 2d view has updated here and we're actually overcutting past the vector and so by applying uh, positive or negative allowances may be advantageous to us if we wanted bigger or smaller pockets. Another option that we have in the form is to use the vector selection order. I'm actually going to demonstrate this using a different file. So let's go to file, close. We don't need to save the changes that we've made here. And we'll open an existing file. And we're going to open the pocket toolpath example 2. Press open. And here is a set of vectors that we're going to use to demonstrate um, that option in the pocket toolpath form. So let's select all of the vectors by box selecting them. We'll go into the pocket toolpath. Here we're cutting down a quarter of an inch. Use the select option in here to select the quarter inch end mill. We'll just go to the edit options. We're just going to simplify this just by altering the pass depth to a quarter of an inch here. We're going to clear the pockets using a raster strategy. Where we'll be applying the profile pass last. And then we can simply go ahead and press calculate. Now I don't actually have any control over the order that the software machines these pockets in. It just picks up what it considers to be the most efficient order. So you can see it's starting over here, and it's going on to this one, this one, this one, over to the right, and it's coming down here, it's going over to the left and down, over to the right, down, and then it's finishing at this square here. Now if I wanted to control the order, I can do that by going back into the pocket toolpath. So let's close out of the preview, double click on the pocket toolpath, and let's just go into the 2D view and we'll just deselect those vectors there. 
So we can use this option here to use vector selection order and it will use the order that I go ahead and select the vectors in. For example, I could click on this vector here, hold down shift and work my way up into our job space, go over to the right and then work our way back down over to the right, work our way back up again and then over to the right and we'll work our way back down like so. And then we could come over here and we could go ahead and press calculate. And then we could go ahead and we'll just preview this toolpath. So you'll see it's cutting that square followed by the next one. And it's just following the order in which I selected those vectors um, within that pocket toolpath. So let's just go back into the pocket toolpath. We're going to look at one final uh, option in the advanced toolpath options of the pocket toolpath form. And that's the bottom option here, the vector selection. Currently it's set to manual, which means that uh, we as a user would need to manually go in and select the vectors that we want to apply this toolpath to. But if you use the selector option, then the software can automatically select the vectors for you based on the criteria that you've got within this form. Now we're not going to cover this but it is covered in a number of other tutorials and I'll link those in the related videos section of the actual tutorial browser. And so that completes this in-depth guide to the pocket toolpath. Thank you for watching.